So if you got a P0365 and you're not sure how to go about testing it, stay tuned. Let me walk you guys step by step how I was able to diagnose this 2013 Honda Elantra. Let's take a look. So the first thing like with any Dyad guys, we're gonna go ahead and look this up. We're using Shopkeep Pro Demand, same thing. First thing we wanna look at is what's the general description. Camshaft position sensor is a sensor detects compression DTC for cylinder number one. The camshaft position consists of a Hall effect sensor. So that means we know it's gonna be a three wire sensor, five volt reference, ground and signal return. Uh, when the target triggers the sensor, the sensor voltage is five volts. If not, the sensor voltage is zero volts. So it's gonna be going from high to low and the camshaft position is sent to the PCM. The PCM uses camshaft signal for synchronizing a firing of sequential fuel injectors. Then if we look a little bit further, this is what's important to us. The PCM monitors the exhaust camshaft sensor signal transition position, which must change only once per crankshaft revolution. If no camshaft signal is detected, while the crankshaft signal is detected, the PCM sets a DTC of P0365. Now, if we look a little bit further, what do we have? Case one, according to Hyundai, could be a missing signal, open or short in signal, ground or power supply circuit, port connection, damaged harness, misadjusted crankshaft and camshaft pulley position, and a faulty position sensor number two. So it could be the sensor. We're going to verify that. We're going to run some tests on this so we can know 100% for sure what's going on with this particular vehicle. So looking at this diagram here, we can see here's our position sensor. Signal is gonna be here, and then we have a ground, and then we have a power feed that's coming from our main relay. So we wanna look at the actual wiring diagram, so this way we have a good idea of what colors we need to actually test. So let's go to the wiring diagram. If you guys aren't sure, go to Search Plus Service. I'm old school, so I go this route. It's a hybrid, 2.4 and we're gonna be looking for the cam sensors. So we're just gonna scroll pretty fast here and see if we can spot them. And there we are, camshaft. So we got two reds, so let's see where those go. We follow those up. That's gonna be our power feed to the Hall Effect sensor. Then we have a green, blue, an orange, and a white. So let's see, where does that, and a yellow. So let's follow this yellow back to 21. Seventeen, and that's going to be my signal wire so this is the one that we want to monitor right here this yellow wire and that camshaft and we're going to put a scope on it so this way we could see how our waveform looks and we will go from there so let's go and set up the lap scope all right so i'm going to use my mic sig here this one has 10 divisions up 14 divisions across. I can actually go a little bit higher. I can go to two volts and that's gonna give me 20 volts for the whole screen. This way we can get a better capture on the screen. Make sure they're both set to DC. And for my initial run, I like to start with two seconds per division. This way I get enough data on the actual screen. So then we can verify it and check the signal. So now let me show you guys how I have it set up on the actual car on how I set up my two test leads. All right, so on cam sensor one, I'm back probed here to the blue and red wire. So that way I can get a signal. And our faulty sensor, which is this bad boy right here, let me move the light so that way you can get, I'm back probed to the yellow or the signal wire. So this way we can get a good signal on it. Now let's go ahead and start the vehicle up. This is a hybrid, so I'm gonna use a pedal depressor to hold the vehicle in high RPM so we can get a waveform. So let's go ahead and run that now. I am working solo, so I had to use a pedal depressor. So as we can see right here, my blue one has a trace. I'm gonna raise this up so this way we're able to see both waveforms on their own to make sure that we're getting a signal on each. If you notice, my intake cam has a good waveform. My exhaust cam looks to be completely dead. So we're gonna have to do some checking there. What I'm gonna do is 
we can reduce the time here and notice how we have a square wave for the intake side but the exhaust side isn't giving me a waveform whatsoever so let's take a look and see what we can find now so my next step is i'm gonna remove my test lead from the sensor and i'm gonna go to the engine computer just to see if i can get a waveform So in a previous video, you guys saw me use or talk about one of these. So this is an LED test light. This one draws 32 milliamps. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this today to verify power and ground to that cam sensor. And then I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that we can use with this light to see if it's a circuit problem or an actual sensor problem. So let me show you guys how I'm gonna set this up to actually test it. Let's go take a look. All right, so right now I went ahead and went to the ground on the strut tower and my red wire is my power feed. And if you notice, we're actually getting a light on. So this means that we can sustain at least a 32 milliamp draw and we're getting power and our ground is okay. Right now I can verify this is my power is okay. So I'm gonna do another test here where I have a power feed over here in my fuse box where I'm gonna go there and this white wire in the center is my actual ground. So we're gonna rerun this test, but now to the ground side. And there we go. So I'm at the power of my fuse box and I'm using the sensor ground and I'm getting a lit test light. So because of that, that's telling me that my ground is okay up to the sensor itself. So now our last thing is, is we gotta verify that actual sensor signal. So I'm gonna run a quick little test here that I actually learned from Paul Danner, Scanner Danner, if you guys don't know who that is. And this way you guys can actually see if it's a sensor problem or not. So let me share that with you guys. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the ground here on my strut tower and I'm gonna go quickly over to the actual computer. All right, what I did here guys is I took a back probe and I went straight to the PCM. It's always a good idea whenever possible to go to the PCM because now you're verifying circuit integrity as well. I'm grounded out here on the strut tower and I'm gonna use my small test light and if you guys notice, is when I tap it to the PCM, my light turns on, right? So now I'm gonna face you guys over to my lap scope so you can see what I'm actually creating by doing that single tap. As I use my test light to tap on the PCM back probe, notice how I'm getting what looks to be a crank sense or camshaft position sensor signal. So what's happening there is I am simulating the waveform by pulling it to ground, and that's why we're getting that actual square wave. Now, so that means that up to that portion, we're okay. What I'm gonna do next is we're gonna run that same test, but now we're gonna do it right at the actual sensor. So I'm gonna back probe the sensor signal there, and now let's go ahead and try it. Notice how when I'm doing it here at the sensor, I'm getting zero response from that actual sensor. And I'm gonna point you guys over to my lap scope and you're gonna also see how we have no response. To me, this seems like I have a circuit problem. More than likely, it looks either it's gonna be a grounded signal wire or an open signal wire because when I'm at the PCM, if I ground it, I can simulate the signal. But if I'm at the sensor and I ground it, it's not simulating whatsoever. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna overlay a wire from the sensor over to the PCM. We're gonna start the engine and we're gonna look at the lap scope to see if that waveform comes back. So let's run that real quick. So I'll take my lead, put that on my back probe there and stack this right there. And we're ready to start the engine up and see how it looks. Remember guys, when we're looking at it, the yellow trace is gonna be the actual waveform that's important to us. So let's start this bad boy up and let's see how it looks. Would you look at that? We got a waveform now. So let's uh, decrease the time base 
and there we go we got our intake cam right here and we got our exhaust cam signal there so now if we were to be looking at this on the PCM side we shouldn't have a code because now we're actually getting the waveform from the sensor back up to the PCM another test we could run here guys is I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the cam sensor and this vehicle had the cam sensor already replaced so I have the the one that was taken off I'm gonna go ahead and install it onto the harness then I'm gonna use the magnet off of my flashlight here to interrupt the signal and I'm gonna show you guys on the lap scope how that waveform actually looks so again I still have the overlay on and using my magnet on my flashlight to interrupt the magnetic field of the Hall effect sensor and this is why I'm actually getting a waveform and I'm gonna redo the same thing so I remove the overlay and right now I'm running my flashlight over it and notice how I'm not getting an actual signal so again this is just verifying again with another test that it looks to be a circuit problem now the last thing I'm gonna do is a continuity test so this way we can verify that we have an open circuit so let's set up and let's run that particular test to prove to you guys that the meter's in good shape, both leads are touching each other, they're zeroed out. So let's go ahead and go from the sensor signal to my PCM here, and we got OL. So this circuit is open, we just confirmed it there. So now let's go to ground, just to make sure it's not shorted to ground, and it's not. So, so Brandon Steckler says it the best, three arrows in a target. What test did we run? We went ahead and went straight to the sensor. We didn't get an output from it. We had five volt reference and we had a ground to the actual sensor. When I tried grounding the sensor manually to replicate the signal at the sensor, we didn't get anything at the PCM. Then I went to the PCM and manually grounded it and we saw it on the actual scope. What is that telling me? We had a circuit problem, right? We plugged in the original sensor with the overlay of the wire. With my magnet, we were able to get a waveform. When I removed the overlay and we did that, no waveform, so that's two. The third one, we just did the continuity test, so that just confirms that we have an open circuit on the actual camshaft signal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contact the customer, I let them know that we gotta open up the harness to get that repaired, so in this way we can take care of that P0365. I know this information was useful and you've made it this far. Make sure you guys give us a like, a follow, share this video so we can continue to better the automotive industry one technician at a time. This starts with you guys. I'm really blessed to have you guys following us, watching this content and help letting us help you guys get to that next level. I also wanna let everybody know that our new merch is in. Make sure you guys check us out. We got a lot of new hats, uh, jackets, we got sweatshirts, everything in our link down below. If you guys are interested in any of our online classes, make sure you guys check out that link also in the description. And our new books are out for A7, AC book is out, and also our Beyond Basics air conditioning books are out as well. Make sure you guys check those out. We have printed and eBooks as well. If we get the approval to do this job, once the job is done, we'll run a retest so this way you guys can see it after the fact. But this is how easy it is to run these particular Diags, guys. This video is about 10 minutes long, and it took me about 10 to 15 minutes to do this whole Diag. Again, this vehicle had already had the camshaft sensor replaced. That didn't take care of it, so that's why it ended up here. Running these basic checks, that's how I was able to figure out what's wrong with the car. And remember, we make Diag more difficult than what it really is. I know this was super helpful, so this way you guys can develop that systematic approach. If you guys have any suggestions for any further videos or you have any questions about how I went about this complete Diag, drop it in the comments so this way I can get back to you guys. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.